It was in Bengal, situated between India and Bangladesh, that a mysterious illness was seen for the first time in 1824. Ashen skin, brittle hair, fever, headaches, weight loss, and death. In three years, the epidemic killed almost 750,000 people in the region. The disease, labeled Kala Azar, which means black fever, spread via roads and rivers, with epidemics occurring every 15 to 25 years. During the 20th century, this black fever extended its reach to Asia and to African countries, such as Sudan and Ethiopia, along Europe's Mediterranean coast, and to Brazil. In 1900, William Leshman, a Scottish physician, observed the parasite under a microscope while he was examining a patient's spleen. In 1903, the disease began to be treated with antimony salts, which, although extremely toxic, are highly active in combating the parasite. The 1920s saw the development of a much less toxic antimony derivative, pentastan. In 1924, the parasite's vector, the real cause of transmission, a small, biting silvery fly, called phlebotomus, was discovered. In the 1950s, the World Health Organization launched a vast DDT insecticide spraying campaign to eradicate malaria. This attempt at eradication failed, but against all expectations, the insecticide proved fatal to the phlebotomist. During the 1960s, Kala Azar seemed to have been eliminated. But as malaria-carrying mosquitoes became increasingly resistant to DDT, at the beginning of the 1970s, spraying was abandoned. The phlebotomist, the Kala Azar vector, proliferated yet again, and there was a surge in widespread deadly epidemics. Between 1977 and 1980, 300,000 people contracted the disease during an outbreak in India. From 1984 to 1994, while civil war raged in Sudan, 100,000 people succumbed to black fever. The disease continues to kill between 20,000 and 30,000 people every year. Visceral leishmaniasis is a neglected tropical disease. There are 200 to 400,000 new cases every year, mainly in poor rural regions. 90% of these cases are in countries in East Africa, South America, and South Asia. In Bangladesh, in Brazil, in Ethiopia, in India, Kenya, Nepal, Sudan, and South Sudan. In East Africa, the disease occurs in epidemic waves. This has been the case, for example, in South Sudan since 2009, where each outbreak has evolved into an epidemic lasting from three to five years. In this new nation, as in neighboring countries, the almost inexistent health infrastructure, population displacements caused by conflict, and the AIDS pandemic are all contributing factors of leishmaniasis. In Ethiopia, 20 to 40 percent of patients suffering from leishmaniasis are HIV positive. Co-infection is disastrous for these patients, as the two diseases mutually reinforce each other. And to cap it all, leishmaniasis is one of the hardest AIDS-related opportunistic infections to treat. In South Asia, the strain of parasite is somewhat different to the one found in Africa. It is more sensitive to drugs and therefore easier to treat. In 2005, Nepal, India, and Bangladesh instituted a program aimed at eradicating the disease by 2015. Between 2005 and 2014, the number of people with the disease dropped on average from 40,000 to 15,000. Leishmaniasis also affects Brazil, which has four to 5,000 cases every year. Its victims are often malnourished children. In North Africa, 
90% of patients are young children. In Southern Europe, it's often people with weakened immune systems who contract the disease. Since the 1980s, there have been 2,500 cases of HIV leishmaniasis co-infection in this region. In France, 20 to 30 people contract leishmaniasis every year. There are two types of Kala Azar, or visceral leishmaniasis. One occurs in both dogs and humans and is caused by the parasite Leishmania infantum. It occurs in southern Europe, the Middle East, and Brazil. The second type, caused by the parasite Leishmania donovani, affects Asia and Africa. Both parasites are transmitted in the same way. They use an intermediary, a vector, a tiny blood-sucking fly, barely a few millimeters long, the female phlebotomus, or sandfly. When the fly bites an already infected person, the phlebotomus ingests the parasites along with its victim's blood. If the phlebotomus then bites someone else, it transmits these parasites to the new victim. Inside the human body, the macrophages, immune cells whose job it is to destroy pathogens, swallow up the parasites. If the immune system succeeds in fighting the infection, the victim is immunized against any future attacks. But if the immune system loses the battle, the victim falls seriously ill very rapidly. Inside the macrophages, the parasite changes form, multiplies, and invades all the organs with a distinct preference for the spleen and the liver. The first signs of the disease are fever, anemia, and an enlarged spleen and liver. If left untreated, the patient dies. In Asia, the disease is nicknamed black fever because the skin often darkens. Leishmaniasis weakens the immune system, leaving patients vulnerable to so-called opportunistic diseases like tuberculosis, malaria, or dysentery. Leishmaniasis is itself an opportunistic disease. People living with HIV are more susceptible to the parasite growing rapidly in their bodies. And when a phlebotomist bites someone who is co-infected, it ingests a higher parasite load, which it will transmit when it bites again. This makes co-infected patients an important reservoir for the transmission of Kala Azar. Visceral leishmaniasis occurs in Africa, Asia, and Brazil. In Africa, there is a rapid diagnostic test for the disease. To confirm the diagnosis, a blood test, or a spleen or bone marrow biopsy, is required. These tests can only be carried out in well-equipped laboratories, which aren't available in rural areas. I found out my child was sick because he was vomiting and had a fever every night. We took him to the hospital in Adong. It was after he was sent to Malakal that we found out he had Kalaza. Since 2010, doctors have been prescribing a 17-day treatment using two drugs meglamine antimoniant, and paromamycin. By cutting the duration of treatment in half, the burden is reduced for patients, the staff, and the facilities. Severely ill patients, the elderly and pregnant women, receive a different treatment because meglamine antimoniate has poor results and increases the risk of death in these patients.
It is very difficult to treat patients co-infected with HIV and visceral leishmaniasis. They are never fully cured of visceral leishmaniasis and will always be at risk of recurrence. In Asia, leishmaniasis is more easily diagnosed and treated. The World Health Organization recommends ambazome that is administered as one single infusion over two hours. The recovery rate is more than 98%. It's already being used in national programs in India and Bangladesh. Unfortunately, ambazome is not heat tolerant and is only administered intravenously. Visceral leishmaniasis, or kala azar, is present on three continents, in Southeast Asia, in East Africa, and in Brazil. In Southeast Asia, there is an ambitious plan to eliminate visceral leishmaniasis, to reduce the number of patients to less than one per 10,000 exposed individuals. The program has been very successful in Bangladesh, Nepal, and also in India. In Eastern Africa, the problem is more serious. Treatment isn't adapted, and we don't know how to control the sandfly that spreads the disease. DNDI is focusing its efforts in this region on working to develop two oral medications that would form a new, more effective treatment and prevent the emergence of resistance. There is an additional problem in Africa. Leishmaniasis and HIV co-infection rates are high. This frequently leads to recurrence of leishmaniasis. Mortality rates are high, so it's very difficult to control the disease. Then there's another problem too, malnutrition. All of these elements make it difficult to control the disease and to help patients. And this doesn't even take into account epidemics linked to political instability, such as in South Sudan. Finally, Brazil is another region with a high level of infection. Here again, there is a lot of leishmaniasis HIV co-infection. Treatment is underdeveloped and not very effective. Ideally, DNDI would like to develop an oral treatment specifically for South America.